Display lag is something that plagues both modern and retro gamers. As any time added from when you press a button on your controller to when there's a reaction on the screen could potentially take away from the gaming experience. Setting your TV to game mode is always a good start, but many people want to know exactly how much lag their TV is adding and if changing any other setting helps as well. There's a few devices and methods out there that help you measure this latency, but for this video I wanted to showcase the one I've been using for over a year now, the Time Sleuth. The Time Sleuth is a device created by Christoph and Dan, the makers of amazing HDMI mods for consoles such as the Dreamcast and PlayStation 1. It works by sending an HDMI signal that flashes white bars on your display. Then you hold up the sensor that's on the back of the Time Sleuth to those white bars, and the device will display the amount of time it takes from when the signal is sent to when the signal is detected by that sensor. The top number in the middle displays the milliseconds of lag. And in the context of retro gaming, you could ignore the microseconds after the decimal point. We just care about milliseconds. The dial on the front of the time sleuth allows you to select from up to five pre-programmed resolutions. This is really handy for testing the difference between lag and interlaced and progressive scan resolutions, which can vary wildly on modern displays. It's also great for tweaking your TV, as I've seen some TVs reduce lag even more by disabling other processing even after game mode has been selected. You can even use basic digital to analog converters to test analog inputs of displays, which is something that really surprised me. Almost every flat panel TV I tried showed more latency when using the TV's analog inputs than it did its HDMI inputs in the exact same resolutions. And no, my converters weren't the issue, as I tested these on CRTs and proved they didn't even add a single millisecond of lag. If you've used the Time Sleuth in the past, you might notice a slightly different look to what's on screen here. A recent update by Kristoff moved all the information displayed to the middle of the screen, including the current displayed resolution. He also added test bars on the right side of the screen, which is kind of fun when comparing CRTs to modern flat panels. Upgrading to this new menu can be confusing at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually really easy, and you could even do things like customize which resolutions the Time Sleuth will output. So let's take a look and see how the update process is done. In order to customize the Time Sleuth, you'll need to utilize the JTAG port on the front of the device, as well as a USB blaster programmer. There's a bunch of different USB blasters available across different price points, but the cheapest ones seem to work fine for me. As a note, don't connect the USB blaster to the USB port on your PC until after the software is installed. More on that in a second. Once you're ready to begin, head to the main TimeSleuth website in order to create your current firmware with up to five different resolutions at a time. At the moment, there are 17 to choose from, including both 50 and 60 Hertz modes, and you could place them in any order you'd like. After you've chosen a resolution for each position, hit Generate Firmware and wait for the file to be created. Please be patient as this can take up to a few minutes. Once it's done, click on the zip file and download it to your computer. Lastly, extract the file inside that zip, which will be labeled lagtester.pof, and this is the file containing both the firmware and the resolution setup. In order to install this firmware, you'll have to install and configure specific programming software, which is kind of a pain at first, but once it's all installed, it'll be really easy to update after that. Start by downloading and installing the programmer software, which is linked in the description and written guide on the website. This might take a while to install, as I think it's also downloading some other components. After it's done installing, make sure to also install the driver as well. You won't need to launch the software yet though. Now plug in the USB blaster and let your computer detect it. If your device manager says anything other than Altera USB blaster, you'll need to manually update the driver by pointing it to the software's install location, which is usually right in the root of the C drive. As long as you have include subfolders checked off, it should find the device right away. 
Once all the software and drivers are set up, connect the USB blaster to the time sleuth using the JTAG cable it should have shipped with. Also, make sure the time sleuth itself is powered on, and it doesn't necessarily need to be plugged into your computer, just powered by any USB power source. Now, launch the newly installed software, Cordis Prime Programmer software. Then, click on Hardware Setup and make sure the USB blaster is detected. If not, try using a different USB cable, and of course, try rebooting the PC as well. If the programmer isn't detected, you won't be able to proceed at all. Then, click on Add File and load the POF file you created with all the different resolutions installed. Select all three checkboxes under Program Configure, Verify, and Blank Check. Then, hit Start to begin the flashing process. That should be it. If all went well, you should see 100% in the upper right corner and no error messages in the bottom status window. If that's the case, then just close the program and you're all done. If you have any issues at all, either with the flashing process or after when trying to actually use the time sleuth, just redo all of the steps one by one and make sure you didn't miss anything, especially anything that has to do with the driver configuration, because that's been an issue for me a few times in the past. Now, while there's lots more I could talk about that's related to lag, this pretty much sums up everything that has to do with the time sleuth itself. Just configure it to the resolutions that you want, point it at your screen, and in almost every display on the planet, you should get good readings. There have been some display incompatibilities, but overall, I think it's a really reliable device, and it's absolutely been my go-to in the past year or so. Now, there are a bunch more devices available. Some were legacy devices that have been around for a while, and others are brand new that I even haven't had a chance to take a look at yet, but I'm very much excited to try. And I should have a video out on these solutions sometime in the future. Maybe I'll do something like a lag tester shootout video or something like that. And of course, I also plan on following up with at least one other video that goes deep into what lag actually is, the different ways you could run into it, and of course, how to avoid it and get the most lag-free experience out there. Well, that's it for this time. If you liked this video, please consider signing up for any support services such as Patreon and Floatplane, because without your support, videos like this, the website itself, and the weekly podcast would never be able to get made. And also, if you'd like to be kept in the loop of everything going on in the retro gaming scene, check out that podcast available every Wednesday both as a video and everywhere audio podcasts are found. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.